Hello and welcome everybody to the lecture series on computer graphics. In the last class, we have discussed about scan line polygon filling algorithms or scan line based polyfill algorithm and we have discussed the basic equations, the concept about uh, the polygon filling algorithm to test whether a point is within a polygon and then uh, uh, basically find out the intersection of a scan line with the edges of the polygon and form pairwise intersections and fill in between. So, that is the basic logic. In addition to this, we also found out how to handle intersections at the vertices of the polygon. If you remember that we, uh, we do expect that we have even number of intersections of a scan line with the edges of a polygon. Okay. Uh, let there be a set of edges which enclose uh, a polygonal area and <laughs> any intersection line typically is expected to uh, have even number of intersections with the polygon edges, except when the polygon passes through a vertex, we can have odd number of intersections and in that case, in certain cases, we uh, increase the number of intersections by one more or reduce it by one. And we have seen those special cases where we basically look whether the uh, the, the uh, adjacent edges of the polygon at the vertex are on the same side of the uh, line of the scan line or it is on either side or both side of the uh, scan line. And so, based on that we reduce the length of uh, the uh, corresponding edge of the polygon and uh, hence that helps to us to reduce the number of intersections and make from odd to even. Okay. So, we now know that uh, you, the vertices need special cases of uh, handling of the polygon and uh, if we, uh, uh, a certain precaution is taken in the algorithm to handle such special cases, then we will uh, always have and that means we are guaranteed to always have even number of intersections of a scan line with the edges of a polygon. Okay. So, if you look back into the last slide which we uh, talked about in the in the last class, this is the scal uh, scan line polyfill algorithm revisited again in brief, where we intersect a scan line with the polygon edges and uh, assuming that you have taken care of the fact that you have taken care of the vertices of the polygon that is the intersection points of the scan line with the vertices. Then you find out the intercepts, fill pair of intersections in between and the basic structure is a loop where we run from scan line y min to y max. Uh, the first step within that uh, loop is intersect scan line with each edge, short intersections with increasing x and uh, since you are, uh, are guaranteed to have even number of intersections, you fill pairwise in between from intersection number 0 to intersection number 1. Do not fill between intersection 1 to 2, fill again from intersection 2 to 3, that are arrow indicates that you are filling pixels in between the intersection 0 on to the intersection 1 in the particular scan line, then intersection 2 to intersection number 3 and so on. So, this is how you fill uh, uh, pairwise intersections in between and leave gaps and uh, with even number of intersections, you typically have uh, the fan scan line filled. Okay. So, assuming this, we will look into certain other aspects about scan line filling algorithm. Uh, well, this is the basic structure, but we uh, are going to handle some special cases to make sure it works uh, correctly and fast and to ensure that uh, this works fast and correctly, we in fact incorporate certain uh, concepts which uh, are uh, extensions of the Bresenheim's uh, uh, scan line drawing algorithm in which is integer based to find out uh, um, uh, how it works 
and helps us to obtain mm, the algorithm and make it work fast in the case of scanline polling and filling. So, two important features of scanline polling and filling are as uh, one as you can see on the uh, screen again, one is called the scanline coherence. Scanline coherence is uh, we, we uh, know that or assume that the values typically do not change much from one scan line to the next. What do you mean by the values? Values of the intersections of the scan line with the corresponding edges of the polygon. So, if you move from one scan line to the other next when you are moving scanning from top to bottom or from bottom to top whatever the case may be when, when you are given or you have already obtained the intersection uh, the even number of intersections of uh, a particular scan line with all the edges of the polygon whichever it intercepts uh, and when you are moving to the next scan line on the top or on the bottom the, the intersection values the x y coordinates of the values of intersections do not change much do not change much and that is uh, an example of uh, what is the concept of scan line coherence. So, we read the sentence once again on the screen where it says that the values do not change much from one scan line to the next. Okay. And the coverage or visibility of a face on one scan line typically differs very little from the previous one. So, this is extension in which we say that the visibility means basically you fill uh, uh, intersection in pairs, okay. you fill intersection in pairs and those intersections in pairs that is what I will call as the visibility of, uh, of a polygon for a particular scan line. When you move from one scan line to another, there is a coherence, the intersection points do not change much. Uh, um, in terms of values of coordinates of x and y. Of course, y intersects uh, y increments or decrements by 1 depending upon whether you are going up or going down, but the x value also does not change much. It is typically a concept which is similar to the Bresenham's line algorithm in terms of pixel drawing from one scan line to the other from one point to the other. So, uh, the visibility or part of the scan line which will be visible inside the polygon will not change much from one scan line to the other. So, this is the meaning of the word scan line coherence where I repeat again values do not change much from one scan line to the next. The coverage or visibility of a face on one scan line typically differs little from the previous one. Let us look at the next point which we call as the edge coherence. The edge coherence says that the edges intersected by the scan line tip i at any particular arbitrary scan line i are typically again intersected by scan line i plus 1. This is also true. But the, it, the word edge coherence means that uh, when you move from scan line i to scan line i plus 1 going on the top or going to the bottom i plus or minus 1 does not matter. The uh, number of edges which intersect scan line i plus 1 with respect to i in general will not change. It will only change if you reach a vertex or getting out of a vertex. Okay? If you get a new vertex or leaving a vertex then basically when you get a new vertex the number of scan lines could increment or decrement all right. But those vertices are few and far between in general for a polygon and hence uh, the number of edges which intersect adjacent scan lines are almost same, almost the same number. So, that is the edge coherence which we talked about, you know what is scan line coherence now and we uh, try to see how we can incorporate these uh, concepts to increase the speed uh, of the polygon filling algorithm and make it work very fast. This means the following, at any given scan line i, if you know how many number of intersections exist and uh, which are the edges through which the scan line is intersecting and the corresponding coordinates of intersection. And if you known that or computed that by some uh, set of steps within the algorithm, then when you move to scan line i plus 1 or i minus 1, that means in the next adjacent scan line, the number of its intersections will actually almost remain the same. It will might change a little bit. Again, I said when you are probably at the vertex, but otherwise the number of intersections in general almost uh, remain the same, sometimes it is exactly the same. That is number one, number of intersections remaining the same and the intersection coordinates, they also change very little. So, these are the concepts of scan line coherence and edge or edge line coherence or edge coherence to be very specific, which uh, will be exploited to make the algorithm very fast in addition to the concepts from Bresenheim's line algorithm, which will be borrowed and extrapolated and put here. Okay. So, let us look into the next slide. This exploits the concept of uh, the, uh, uh, the edge uh, coherence uh, and the scan line coherence as well. We are going to discuss this. This basically means that if uh, for a particular scan line at the bottom which is at uh, 
uh, y is equal to y k at the kth iteration let us say that the, this is the bottom line is the scan line with uh, integer coordinates y is equal to y k and let us say that this particular scan line intersects the left edge of a polygon. I have just shown a part of the polygon here with one vertex and two adjacent edges, okay? two adjacent edges and out of the two adjacent edges to the left and the right, I am looking into the left edge, left edge of this polygon which is marked by the line L. So, line L is something like uh, a draw line command using Bresenham's is what you can visualize that this is the line L and we are interested only, uh, 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 what were you interested in? If the scan line y k intersects the edge of the polygon or the line L on the left hand side at the integer coordinates x k comma y k, if that is the intersection at the line L, then at the next scan line y k plus 1 which is equal to y k incremented by 1 because we are moving from bottom to top integer coordinates of y going up from bottom to top. If that is the case, that means for the next scan line y k plus 1, the uh, next intersection can be easily computed uh, which are given as coordinates x k plus 1, y k plus 1 which can be computed easily. First of all, we know that y k plus 1 is just y k with an increment 1. So, that is very straightforward. That is the next y intersection. What is the next x intersection? Well, this is what we exploit it's similar to the Bresson Hamsun line algorithm. We can substitute this increment and easily obtain that the next x intersection will be increased by 1 by m because if that is this where m is the slope of the line y equal to mx uh, plus c is the equation of the line. You can rewrite it as uh, x equal to m by uh, y by c plus c plus m. So, if, if y increments by 1, you can resubstitute in the equation and find out that the difference in x coordinate will be the slope 1 by m. So, I leave that as a small exercise to you because we have manipulated this equation a lot in uh, not only uh, in Bresson Hamsun algorithm, but also in the previous lecture little bit. So, please uh, do that and you can substitute back because you know if x k y k is the point through which the line passes, the next point will be um, uh, for the next scan line y k plus 1 will be the x coordinates will increase by a fraction 1 by m. So, that, that is a constant factor by which the intersection goes up. So, this is the concept of uh, the uh, scan line coherence uh, where we know that the intersection increments always by 1 by m from one scan line to the other. Okay. Okay. Slope of the line L we know for a polygon edge is y, this is the expression of the slope of the line. We know that given two intersection points y k plus 1, y k, x k plus 1 and x k, this is the slope of the line M and uh, that uh, can be substituted and obtain x k plus 1 as. Uh, so, this is how and in the numerator is basically 1 because you know that y k plus 1 minus y k will be. So, the numerator is 1 uh, in this uh, equation of m and this helps you to derive that x k plus 1 is x k plus 1 by m. So, using the bottom equation you can easily obtain what is x k plus 1 that is very simple and straightforward. Thus, the intersection for the next scan line can be easily obtained by a round function of x k plus 1 by m where m is delta y delta y by delta x, this is dy by dx of your Bresenham's. So, we know that, but now again as like Bresenham's scan line algorithm, we avoided all floating point calculations. Remember that? We also avoided the round function, okay? because we wanted to use integer arithmetic to make the algorithm work as fast as possible. So, we will see uh, how to avoid floating point calculations and make this calculation uh, easier by avoiding the floating point addition and the round function. Okay. Let us take an example how to implement this using integer arithmetic. Let us take an example, uh, the slope of the line del y by del x which is the difference in the y coordinates divided by the difference in x coordinate. These equations should not be new to you if you have understood the Bresenham's line drawing algorithm. The m was calculated as dy by dx 7 by 3. You initialize a counter variable c is equal to 0. Okay? And you also initialize a counter increment which I will call as delta c and take that or consider that equal to delta x or delta x is 3 here. Okay? So, that is what you, so these are the three initialization commands m, c and delta c. In fact, we will not use m because it is a floating point number, we will use the counter which is an integer quantity and it will be incremented also by integers because del y and del x which is the difference in y coordinates and the difference in the x coordinates are all integer quantities, okay? but we will not divide them. So, what do you do? 
what you do is starting from a scan line say scan line 0 or 1 whatever the case may be for the next three scan lines successive values of c are incremented by delta c. So, if the counter value is set c is equal to 0 for a particular scan line say the starting scan line for an edge okay, then you increment the values of c by uh, the delta c. Okay. So, c is equal to 0, then you have delta c, delta c increments by 3. So, from 0 it will reach 3, 6, 9, 12 like that. So, this is the next set of 3 scan lines, the successive values of c are given as 3, 6 and 9 respectively. Where do you stop? You have to stop somewhere. You find you keep on incrementing the counter value by the counter increment. That means, increment c from 0, 3, 6, 9 and keep observing when the value of c crosses del y that is the value 7, you will find that the value of counter is 0 which is less than del y the first scan line, then it reaches 3, then it is 6, it is also less than delta y. So, only when the third scan line when the value of c reaches 9, the counter value will be more than del y and at that particular point you increment x k or the x coordinate of the intersection by 1 only when the third scan line, when at the third scan line you cross this counter value crosses del y and at that point you reset the counter value or decrement it by the value delta y. You know you are actually handling floating point numbers by integer manipulations only. You, know, you can literally divide all of these by the denominator and see that you are basically rounding off at some point. Okay. I leave this an exercise for you to verify that. So, you minimize c by del y um, uh, by, so when it is reached 9 at that point you increment x and reduce c by the counter value by del y. So, 9 minus 7 will be 2. So, this is how you keep proceeding. Repeat the above steps uh, till y k reaches y max because you are moving from scan line y to uh, some below y min to y max or for a particular edge you are starting from the vertex of a particular edge uh, y min to the max maximum y value for the particular edge. So, y min to y max means uh, one uh, edge point of uh, one vertex of an edge to another vertex of the edge and you start with c equal to 0 keep incrementing keep watching when the c reaches del y or crosses that reduce it by del y again keep on incrementing again it is keep on doing that and each point when it crosses and when you have to decrement you increase the x value by 1 that is how you do and you stop when you have reached y k to y max. This is how you use integer based algorithm to obtain or to exploit and uh, this exploits the scan line coherence as well to compute the next intersection from the previous one and it does it very fast because it is based on integer algorithm. You just have to uh, add a couple of integers, one integer addition and one integer division. In fact, there is no multiplication subtraction as well as uh, was the case uh, for Bessenhams. Of course, that involved the multiplication by 2 which also can be done could have been done faster by bitwise manipulation um, in, in a standard uh, C program. Um, and uh, and uh, this is how you exploit coming back to the scan line following a fill algorithm. This is how you implement this scan line coherence to compute the next intersection from the previous one as you go from one scan line to the other. So, I hope you look relook at these steps again. I repeat again set counter c is equal to 0, set counter increment equal to del x, keep on incrementing from one scan line by delta c. Whenever you find here in this particular example, third scan line, you find the c value at the third scan line is 9, this is cross to del y which is 7, what you do is increment x by 1, reduce the counter value by delta y and then make it 2 and keep on increasing. So, what will happen in the next scan line after the third one? From 2 you increase from 2 plus 3 is a 5, 5 plus uh, um, 3 is 8. So, when it crosses 8 at the fourth, uh, fifth and sixth one, okay, so 2, 5, and then 8. So, okay, third, fourth, fifth itself will be 8. Again, it will be crossing delta y, reduce it by 2. So, 8 minus uh, 7 you will reach 1 and then. So, keep on doing this cycle till you reach y max. So, that is what is the example. You can easily work it out um, extensively for a certain set of values. Okay. Now, coming deep into the algorithm, we will look at the data structures which must be used, which may be used. We will follow the textbook uh, only by uh, Hearn and Baker here and see what type of data structures we have been recommended in this in this uh, for solving this particular problem. A typical example of a data structure used to solve the problem. We use what is called a sorted edge table. It contains all information necessary to process the scan line efficiently. 
Okay, so what is a sorted edge table? A set, we will call this a set from now on, it is not a typical set, it is a sorted edge table called in sort SET is probably the correct way of pronouncing it, you can use set, but SET we will use. The SET is typically built using a bucket sort algorithm and with as many buckets as there are scan lines. We know that the bucket sort is an efficient sorting algorithm when you have integers. Okay you know sorting integers with that to within a certain range. So, that is typically uh, the, the scan line range between y min to y max is a very good example where you can use bucket sort. All edges are sorted by their y min coordinates. Okay. What is this y min coordinates with a separate y bucket for each scan line. So, you have a bucket for each scan line and all edges are sorted by their minimum y coordinate. That means, each edge you know a polygon is defined are given as an input to this algorithm by a set of vertices. So, you have a set of vertices x 1, y 1 to x 2, y 2, x 3, y 2 and so on up to x and y and the last uh, vertex being the first one. So, actually you can form pairwise these uh, uh, set of vertices and each is an edge starting from the first to the second, second to the third and so on. So, if, if these each is an edge, so you take each of these edges and look into their minimum values of y 1 and y 2, those pair of y values and the minimum of them is their y min. So, for each edge you look into their y mean coordinate, minimum y value for each edge is what you look and that is how the edges are sorted based on their y mean coordinate with a separate y bucket for each scan line. Okay. We will have a look at this SAT or the sorted edge table now. Within each bucket edges are sorted by increasing x of y mean point, this also we will see what is done. Okay. We talked of each a separate bucket for each scan line and so for each scan line since we have a separate y bucket within that edges are sorted by increasing x of the y mean point. Only non horizontal edges are stored and these are stored at the scan line position in the uh, store these edges at the scan line position in the SET or the sorted edge table. You do not need to process at some point if you remember in the last class in the algorithm we say we only process non horizontal edges. If you have an horizontal edges what will typically happen is those points will form an intersection uh, a suitable pair and you will fill in between. So, need in fact, you do not to bother about horizontal lines. It, 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 the algorithm itself is well suited where the horizontal edges will be automatically taken care of. So, we are talking about non horizontal edges. So, this is the set of lines we describe what is a short edge uh, SAT or sorted edge table where we talk of a bucket short with as many buckets as there are scan line. All edges are sorted with their y mean coordinates with a separate y bucket for each scan line. Remember these points, note it down now, we verify when you have an example of an SAT. Within each bucket edges are stored by increasing x for y min point, you remember what is this y min minimum y for a particular edge and only non horizontal edges are stored and store these edges at the scan line position in the SET. Okay. Let us look at a uh, sample record for each scan line in the edge structure before looking into an example of a bucket sorted SET. The edge structure which is necessary to be stored for each scan line are <coughs> the y max or the maximum value of y. That means, you need to know from your y mean value for a particular edge till what value of y max you are going. So, y mean to y max you need to store left to right, right to left whatever the case may be and you need to store already it is stored shorted and kept in the bucket shorted SCT with the y mean. So, you need to store the y max, you also need to store the x mean because you are basically using the uh, scan line coherence to increment the x. We have see, seen that uh, counter based integer algorithm which will help you to increase x. So, you store x mean and also you need to store the value of delta x by delta y or delta x and delta y basically. Okay. So, pointed to next edge, you can store delta x delta y separately and of course, the pointer to the next edge must also be given because the vertices have to be taken care of. Active edge list is another data structure which must be used which contains all the edges which are currently active which means they are crossed by the current scan line at any stage of iteration or um, scan line at the current stage of iteration. So, at any current scan any scan line will not intersect in general all the edges of a polygon. Okay. Some edges will start above the scan line and end some will be finishing below that, but at any given scan line within a minimum enclosed rectangle which uh, covers the, uh, the polygon, it will intersect a subset of the different edges of a polygon. Okay. So, uh, you need to know what are the edges currently being intersected at a given scan line, so that the edge coherence and scan line coherence can be made uh, to work. So, so, that is stored in the 
active edge list. Remember, edge structure stores the information for each scan line. That's okay. That will be updated for each scan line. But you also need to store an active edge list, which will tell you which are the edges which are being processed at any given point of time for a current scan line. So, and uh, because when you reach a vertex, what will happen is you throw off uh, an edge and bring in a new edge. The vertices have to be processed before the loop, not only that, within the loop when you reach basically a vertex, you throw off an edge which is over and bring in a new edge which starts with that corresponding value of y. So, that is why you need an active edge list or AEL as it called it. So, edge structure, active edge list and AEL is a list of edges that are active for this scan line, shorted by again increasing x intersection. That is also, it is also called in some literature as an active edge table or AET. AET. Okay. Let us take an example in this class to this is again taken from the book and uh, let us look at this polygon which consists of how many vertices how many vertices are there in this polygon uh, well six isn't it so there are and look at these uh, grid structure where i have placed the uh, actually the pixel within the uh, square area but we will take the integer intersection intersections of the grid as the integer coordinates okay pixel could be adjacent in this square all right so, there are A, B, C, D, E and F. Let repeat again, this is A, B, C, D, this is E here and F. Okay. So, we will assume that the pixel is in within this square grid, but the intersection point we take for um, ease of understanding as the intersection of the grid lines as our integer coordinates and uh, uh, the minimum enclosed rectangle will run in this case from 2 to 13 yeah, along x direction and along y direction from 1 to 11. Okay. There is a particular reason why I have put this 1, 3, 5, 7 in uh, uh, different color yellow and 9, 11 other as uh, non-yellow. We will see that very soon when we look at the data structure. So, I hope this polygon is very clear. It does not contain any horizontal edge which had to be any anyway, if it was there we do not have to even process that only for non-horizontal edges which are all vertical inclined except the horizontal ones we process that and so in this case since there are no horizontal edges we do not need to worry about that. Okay. So, assuming that this figure I will bring this figure again and again when, whenever we need and we will look at the data structures which is used for analyzing this polygon. This is the bucket sorted edge table for polygon. What is the sorted edge table? ACT okay, set or ACT we talk about sorted edge table, bucket sorted you remember the properties which we just talked about okay, each um, uh, the, the information of the scan line will hold the y min value um, pointed to the next edge and so on. So, that is all will be stored. So, let us look at this bucket sorted edge table for the polygon which we have just seen. If necessary we will go back to the polygon again to have a look look at the in, in the zero scan line if you go and look back it does not contains any vertex it starts with scan line number 1. So, scan line number 1 has information about two edges a b and b c why it has information about two edges a b and b c let us go back to the figure and see I will keep rolling back and forward between the polygon and the shorter edge table you see at scan line number 1 there is a vertex where two edges that is a b and B C. Remember, we are talking about anti-clockwise based representation. So, edges will be talked of as A B, B C, C D, D E and E F and then finally, F A. That is the way we will talk about um, uh, um, an, a counterclockwise based rotation along, um, through, through the vertices and through the edges uh, by which these edges will be represented. So, uh, at scan line number 1, which is the bottom most scan line of the minimum enclosed rectangle, which covers this polygon. The, the bottom scan line number 1 has two edges, one is A B, another is B C, correct. So, that is what is there again A B and B C are the two scan lines of the uh, polygon. What was the data structure for the sorted edge table? If you remember, what was the data structure? Yes, it is given at the bottom of that A B, you need to store information in the sorted edge table, it is bucket sorted all right, but at for each scan line for the edges which start with the minimum value of, uh, 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 of uh, the with the, uh, the y min, y min for both is 1. So, at that point that is why the A B and B C are there, you need to store the value of y max, maximum value for uh, um, uh, the edge and then the minimum value of x okay, at where it starts for that vertex because the vertex is b. So, you have to go back and see where is the vertex b, go back where is the vertex b, you look here. 
the vertex B has coordinates 7 and 1, x coordinate is 7, y is 1. So, so x has to be x uh, has to be put as x mean has to be put at 7 in both. What is y max for A B and what is y max for B C? Y max for A B is 3, okay, that is the maximum y coordinate for the look at the figure very carefully. Maximum y value for the edge A B is 3. Once you follow the first uh, entry of the sorted edge table, the next uh, few things will be obvious. Okay. A B has the, the edge A B has a maximum value of 3 for y, maximum y coordinate is 3. What about for B C? For the edge B C, the maximum value of y coordinate is at the vertex C which is 5. So, 3 and 5 are the maximum y value x mean is 7. Okay? So, let us go back. So, that is what that is very easy to for you to visualize now that the x mean is 7 in both and the y max is 3 and 5 which we have just seen from the table. What are the value of del y by del x uh, for the sorted edge table 5 and 2 let us go back okay? 5 by 2 del x and del y. So, del x is first stored which is uh, basically uh, 7 minus 2 is 5 for a b and in it's del y is 2 for a b in this case and similarly for b c if you see it is 13 minus 7 which is 6 and 5 minus 1 which is 4. So, 6 and 4 should be there ok yes see 6 by 4 actually instead of keeping as a fraction you can keep these two values separately because when you apply that scan line coherence you need that counter which will be incremented by del x and kept on observing till the del y is crossed reset the counter increment. So, you basically need to store those values of del y del x. So, although the structure shows a floating point value of minus 5 by 2 and 6 by 4, but do not assume that you need always this fractional number because in fact you are not computing anything in floating point you are not computing anything in terms of floating point when you are looking at intersection from scan line y k to y k plus 1 to y k plus 2 and so on. So, everything is done by integer precision algorithm although the slope m uh, 1 by m which is uh, del x by del y is given as a floating point number, but you, you uh, have to assume here that although I have given in this representation you are basically storing the integer values of del x by del y. So, come back to that figure del x by del y 5 and 2 let us relook back into the edge a b and find out what is my del x and what is my del y. Well, you see again <coughs> for the edge a b del x value is 7 minus 2 which is 5 and the del y value is 3 minus 1 which is 2. Hence, we have 5 by 2 or 5 comma 2 is also is better to say that. And for the edge b c, the del x value is 13 minus 7 which is 6 and the del y value is 5 minus 1 which is 4. So, that is what is put into the first scan line. Hope it is clear y max x min 1 by m. Okay. These are the three elements of the data structure for each scan line stored in a bucket sorted edge table in each entry corresponding to the scan line which passing through a vertex. That is what you can visualize is a sorted edge table. And you can see if there are two, the last pointer lambda uh, typically indicates a null pointer and the last entry of the field for your uh, a b entry will point to the next edge b c. Correct. So, now you can see this is done. There is no vertex at scan line number 2 go back this is scan line number 2 the one above one does not have there is a vertex at scan line number 3, 5, 7, 9 and 11. You just see the vertex A is at y is equal to 3, the vertex C is at scan line 5, the vertex E is at scan line 7, vertex F is at scan line 9, vertex D is at scan line 11. Those are the entries if you see here in fact you only can see that there are entries at 3, 5 and 7 because you need to store the bottom most up to 7 you need to store that is why you have put different colors you do not need to enter anything at 9 and 11 because those are the y max entries for the respective edges we are actually looking at y min. So, 1, 3, 5 and 7 are the entries in the bucket sorted edge table which will have non zero entries or uh, it will not be null the rest of them are all lambda which indicates null entries. So, 1 is there let us look at 3 it contains only one entry the the uh, um, uh, the edge f a what is the y max value 9 we will go and check it the x min is 2 and y is the value 0 here because the edge we will see is vertical if the edge is vertical basically the del y is 0 so you do not need to store anything in there 
basically you are only keep incrementing the x um, uh, incrementally as you go. Uh, in do not increment x at all is the, the basic idea, but look at y max and x spin for edge f a. Okay? Look at edge f a, the it runs from 3 to 9. So, 9 is the, the uh, y max entry, x max uh, is, is 2. So, that is what are entered here 9 and 2 and there is the last pointer is none. So, uh, if you have drawn the diagram already for the polygon, I will not go back and you can see that the next entries for this scan line 5 is C D with uh, y max at 11, x mean at 13 and the last entry is lambda that 0 entry in the 1 by m shows that again it is a vertical edge C D and F A you can see in your notes that what we have seen from the polygon are vertical edges. So, absolutely there is no problem you do not have to provide a 1 by m value. The last uh, the topmost entry comes at scan line number 7. Scan line number 7 if you see we will go back to the figure and see that there are basically two edges E F and D E here as you can see here E F and D E uh, are the two. Uh, entries at scan line number 7. This is a new diagram, do not worry about the pixels plot in between, we are going to analyze them later on, but at scan line number 7 for the uh, uh, scan line F A, I am sorry, E F and uh, uh, D E. Okay. Let us look at D E and uh, E F, that is what we have seen, yes, E F and D E, and it sorted with increasing uh, x, uh, y, y values typically. So, as you see here uh, the um, y max entry is 9 in one, 11 in the other one, x min is both 7 of course and the slope is 5 by 2 and 6 by 4, okay? minus 5 by 2 for E f because it is just 2 along delta y, it is 7 along delta x. In this case for the edge d e, it is uh, x is about 1 to 13 minus 7 which is 6 and 1, 2, 3, 4 for the y. For, for the y and 9. So, that is what I was talking about. I am sorry, this is the entry for the bucket sorted edge table for the polygon. So, this is the example of how you construct your sorted edge table after making the minimum enclosed rectangle and going through the edges and then this is how you uh, have to write an algorithm to construct your sorted edge table uh, before you start and initialize and before you enter the loop. Of course, we are assuming here that all vertices to form pairwise intersections are all handled special cases, so that you always end up with um, even number of intersections to be filled up. Okay. So, let us look at this example, why I am talking this example of scan line number 8. This is of course, a very simple uh, case of uh, intersection, I have taken a simple example which is a get given from the book and you see here that for scan line number 8, the pixels which you have to fill in are pixels 2, 3 and 4 between uh, uh, edges F A and uh, E F and then again pixels 9, 10 up to 13 for edges C D and D E between C D and D E that is. So, you get 4 uh, intersections or 2 pairs and you fill it between pairs. So, that is what you will fill. So, how do you get those intersections for scan line number 8? The status of the acti active edge table A E T if you remember the active edge table will contain the edges which are active. What do you mean by active? Those are the uh, edges which are active or available or the scan line intersect that. So, if you look at that, these are the set of intersections by the AET pointer will point to F A, which will in turn point to E F, E F will point to D E and D E will point to C D. Look at that, no, uh, just note down this order F A pointing to E F. E F pointing to D E, D E pointing to C D. We look at the other values later on, okay. uh, they are same as y max x 1 by m entries, but you look at the order of the pointer from the A T pointer to the last entry of C D, the null pointer here, F A to E F to D E to C D. If you look at that, that is it, F A to, uh, 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 to E F and then you have uh, D E to C D, D E to C D. F A to E F D E to C D. So, that is the sequence when you have and you look at the intersections of the values of x in increasing order. You have an intersection from 2 to f, 2 pairs for 2 to 4 and then 9 to 13. So, you fill up pixels from 2 to 4 and then 9 to 13 that is what we have done. That is what we just talked about 2 to 4 and then 9 to 13 and that scan line will be filled with exactly those pair of intersections nothing will be filled outside the polygon. 
So, if you can maintain this loop and reach a particular point where the active edge table contains the exact pair of intersections at any given point of time, then you can form pairs and just fill in between and your algorithm will work. Now, we have to of course, see how do you reach this position starting from any vertex and of course, at any vertex you need to throw out the active edge, the inactive edges which are over and, and bring in new edges. Okay? So, that is another point which we need to look. So, status of eight yeah, active edge table I hope is clear for scan line eight. As you see before, the, uh, the y max of f a is kept as nine that is not interchange because these active edge table entries are brought in from the bucket sorted edge table. Eight entries are brought in from the ACT which is the sorted edge table uh, for any given scan line. Only when you reach a, a particular vertex what is done is for that particular scan line when you find that the y max value of an entry has reached that y max for that scan line you throw it out and bring in a new vertex from the sorted edge table. Okay? So, you start at a vertex you have a set of active edge tables with the new one brought in keep on going till you need uh, reach a, a scan line uh, which is a vertex pointed out into by an ACT that means a new edge has come throughout the old edge and bring in a new edge. So, that is what you typically keep doing in fact, sometimes you have to bring in two edges okay? it is possible, okay? but typically you bring in one edge and throw out one edge because you need to have at any given point of time pairs of entries pair and that will help you to obtain pairs of intersections. Uh, for a scan line in a shorted edge table and uh, that uh, will help you to fill pairwise intersections. Okay? So, at any given point of time if you have an even number which helps, helps you to form pairs then when you reach a vertex basically if you th throw out two uh, uh, edges you need to bring in two edges otherwise you will have an odd number of entries and odd number of that is not possible. So, of course, that vertex manipulation all that which we talked about in the earlier class you remember that special case of vertex handling has all been done, you reduce an edge so that you basically bring in only one edge and throw out one edge. If you need to throw out two edges, two edges will be brought in. Those all adjustments have been done a priori so that you always maintain the active edge table eight entries as even number of fields because whenever you have even number of fields you will have an even number of x intersections and you can form pairs otherwise you will have a problem. So, you see for the scan line eight you have four or even number of entries and even number of intersections and in this specific case it is two pair of intersections. Look at a very interesting case of the status of the active edge table at scan line nine. Remember you roll back this is scan line number eight compare this with scan line number nine you see that the entries for the x has changed. Since F A is a vertical line x does not change because the increment is 0, E F is different it changes from 4 to 2. Now, this change of the x entry for the E F edge is done by that counter which I am not showing the calculation, but I hope you understand I leave it in exercise for you to verify that that counter will work for the F, F e, edge, uh, e F edge starting from the vertex E to the vertex F as you go along. Uh, but uh, we assume that with the help of that dy dx resetting counter to 0 incrementing by um, uh, dx till you reach uh, a maximum value of uh, del y then all those calculations which you have studied today with the help of counter and counter increment is all have to take place from one scan line to another to, to, to bring in that scan line coherence and reduce the calculation based on integer based arithmetic. So, that helps you to reduce the x intersection from E f which was at scan line 8 it was 4 for E f and at now scan line 9 it has become 2. So, you fill up just one pixel at 2 and then for the D e and C D if you see D e intersection was 9, C D intersection was 13, D e changes to 10, C D still remains at 13. Why C D remains at 13? It is like F A, C D is also vertical edge, you see the 1 by m entry is 0. So, the x intersection for F A and C D does not change because the 1 by m entry is 0 uh, and since it is a non-zero entry for del y by del x del y del x del x basically to be very precise um, the e for E f and D e the x intersection change. So, what is the intersection at scan line 9? 2 to 2 that is one pair and another pair is from 10 to 13. Okay? We will see this intersection for scan line 9, the figure will come back. Status of AET at scan line 10, very very interesting. From 8 you have moved to 9, 9 to 10. When you move from 9 to 10 you find that the for the edges F A and E F the y max value has been reached for that scan line. So, throw out F A and E F throw out F A and E F and keep those edges for which the y max value is more than the scan line number. Since y max entries for D and C D are 11 which is more than 10 you keep those entries and if necessary bring in 
new entries from the sorted edge table. But at scan line 10, if you remember the bucket uh, uh, sorted edge table, look into that entries which you have copied from the slide just now. There are no in new, new uh, um, entries in the sorted edge table. There is no it starts at that 10. So, you do not need to bring edges. So, it basically it is throwing out two edges. You can throw out edges, do not bring one. So, the number of entries are, is still an even number. Okay. So, look at that. At scan line number 10, the entry of D moves uh, up from 10. It, it changed from previous entry. Uh, it, it 10, then it moved to 11. C D still stays at 13 because the value is 0. So, okay. so this is 8, 9 and 10. Okay. So, you will just look at these uh, things. See that 8 we had filled from 2 to 4 and this is the scan line, the yellow line. So, this scan line number 8 where you had intersections from 2 to 4 and then from 9 to 13. Check it out again, 2 to 4, 9 to 13. Look at the x values for F A and E F, D and C D. I repeat 2 to 4 and then 9 to 13. Okay, so, that is what was 2 to 4 and 9 to 13 x coordinates of the intersection. When you move to 9, you had this, you will have this intersection only at 2 and then you will have from 10 to 13. Let us check the values which I gave you 2 to 2, then again from 10 to 13. Let us look at scan line number 9, 2 to 2, 10 to 13, correct? Roll back the figure and at scan line number 10, you will have only two intersections which is basically, uh, it is at this midpoint, you will basically get 11 or 12 to 13. Okay? Basically, you will move from scan line number 9, which was intersection 10 to uh, 11 here, 11 to 13, a little bit of the Bresenham, whatever the algorithm, either this pixel or the next one will be picked up. I think it is from 11 to 13. Let us go to scan line number 10. Yes, it is 11 to 13. You look at the x value for D and C D for scan line number 10 at the bottom of your screen, intersections are 11 and 13 respectively. Precautions you need to do to make this algorithm work. Now, we talked of two to three different data structures. One is SET, a sorted edge table. Information about um, each edge to be stored in the bucket sorted edge table and also in the active edge list. It is the base data structure for each edge which has to be plugged out from the sorted edge table and brought into the active edge list based on the scan line entries. As you keep incrementing the scan line throughout a few, bring in new edges, ensure the number of intersections is always even. We do that. So, this is all done. Precautions about vertices already taken a priori. And then uh, these are the precautions which we revisit again. Intersection has an integer y coordinate, this is always true. If the point, if this point is the y min of the edges end points, count it also. Okay? If this point is the y min of the edges end point, you also take that as the y coordinate. If the edge is horizontal and on the scan line, do not count it. We have already uh, taken that all this in this example, we have taken only non horizontal edges, but the edge is horizontal and on the scan line, you never count it. During iteration process with each scan line, the AET is in fact updated, nothing is done to the SET. SET is constructed before, after the uh, vertex cases have been handled, you construct the sorted edge table and only uh, start with the active edge table, AET constructed from the base uh, bottom scan line and keep on updating the AET. The X intersections bring in at the word, get a vertex, look into the sorted edge table, bring in new entries throughout if necessary, this is what you do at the active edge table that is updated and for each scan line, the AET or the active edge table keeps track of the set of edges it has to intercept and store the intersection points in it. The shorting of the entries is with, is with respect to the x intersection values. I repeat again what is done with the active edge table. For each scan line, the active edge table keeps track of the set of edges it has to intercept and stores the intersection points in it. The shorting of the entries is done with respect to the x intersection values. Okay? You have a relook at it. Scan line number 8. You see, I have intersections now from 2 to 4, 9 to 13. Okay? F, A, E, F, D, and C, D, last null pointer. After this, when we move to 9, this is what we have. We, we find intersection from 2 to 2 for F, A, and E, F, and then from 10 to 13 for D to C. Do not fill in anything in between. When we move to scan line number 10, we only fill in points between 12 and 13. Okay? That is what you do for 8, 9, and 10. So, the processing steps again revisited. Set y to the smallest y in the SET. There is the first non empty bucket in this shortage table, is what you have to set your y and initialize active edge table to be empty. Okay? And then repeat until both active edge table and shortage edge table are empty. Both have to be empty. So keep on repeating this loop. Okay? Move from the shortage edge table, the bucket y, to shortage edge table bucket y to active edge table, those edges was whose y min is equal to y. You start with a minimum value of y and at that point move from the SETA bucket entries, the y entries to the active edge table. So, you 
have a non entry into the active edge table now and the ACT does not change. Okay. Short AET on X, this is simple as sorted edge table is pre sorted anyway, so you do not need to sort anything on the active edge table. Look into whatever you have copied for the active edge table, this is already pre sorted because you are bringing in values okay, anyway at the start and they are pre sorted, so you put it when at any vertex later on. At any vertex later on, when you throw away a set of vertices and bring in new, you might have to do a little bit of adjustment in, adjustment in the number of pointers and entries. What you need to do is when you throw out, you readjust the pointer and bring it uh, something towards the end or maybe at the beginning. That is where you have to do when you reach another vertex later on. But initially, it is just pre sorted, you just load from the sorted edge table the bucket entries uh, 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 corresponding to y in the active edge table. Okay. Once this is all done, fill pixels in scan line y, look at the screen. Okay, the net third uh, point in the loop is fill pixels in scan line y using pairs of x coordinates from active edge table. Fill pixels in the scan line y using pairs of x coordinates from active edge table. Increment scan line by 1 and then remove from active edge table those entries if, if you find uh, that uh, there is a y max where edges are involved, where there is a y max entry into the active edge table. Uh, for that corresponding scan line which you have reached and for that scan line y, if the y is equal to y max for certain edges in the active edge table, remove those entries and for each non-vertical edge in active edge table and you do not have anyway uh, uh, horizontal edges. So, all edges are non-vertical anyway, non-vertical edges in active edge table, update x for new y that is you know how to do that using counter. So, we will go through this loop once again very short. Uh, this uh, repeated loop, you actually set y to smallest y, initialize AET to be empty, fill up SET, repeat until both AET and SET are empty. What do you repeat? It is a loop which says move from SET bucket y to active edge table, those edges for which y min is equal to y, short AET which is simple and shorted anyway at the start. Later on you have to do that shorting when you uh, encode in a vertex, fill pixels on scan line y using pairs of x coordinates from active edge table, increment scan line by 1 then remove from active edge table those entries for which y is equal to y max edges are not involved. Okay. So, you remove them okay. and for each non vertical edge update x for new y and that finishes the loop till you complete this cycle. Okay. So, this is in short, uh, short of a pseudo language, uh, pseudo code of, uh, uh, of scan line filling algorithm, construct edge table y min is equal to y for all i in the edge table, active edge table is null and you run from y min to y max, merge sort edge table y into active edge table by x. This is an, I hope you, know, those with CS background will know what is a merge sort, it, uh, the uh, edge table of a y entry from the shorted, this construct the edge table is meaning the shorted edge table merge sort these entries of y of the shorter edge table into the active edge table by x value, fill between pairs of x in edge table and for each edge in active edge table, if uh, y max is equal to the current y scan line, remove the edge from AET, else uh, increment the edge by dx. Although this floating point uh, equation is given, we know that this is done by integer algorithm. Okay. So, do not take this by heart that actually you are doing a floating point as no. This uh, uh, equation or that uh, 1 by m whenever it is given in the uh, entries in that active edge table. In an example, you must know that we are always using that counter based integer algorithm to get to the next x intersection. Okay. And finally, short active edge table by x value and that is the scan line filling algorithm. So, this ends the series of lectures on polyfill scan conversion of a polygon or a scan line polygon filling algorithm. And I hope you enjoyed the example as I also did delivering it to you. Please work out that example yourself or take a set of polygons. Uh, you can work with groups of two students each. Take a graph paper, draw a polygon, find out the set of vertices, construct a sorted edge table, start with an empty active edge table, fill up from the minimum y the entries into the active edge table, keep on incrementing the scan lines. When you enter a vertex, remove the required number of edges, bring in new edges if required and keep on doing this till you reach y max. So, find out, work out a different example, tally your results with each other and see if you, uh, if you have understood the algorithm and the data structure which has been used and the integer by algorithm which exploits the scan line and edge coherence, things will be very fine. So, uh, please try an example to uh, understand this method and then you can try to implement this using uh, um, uh, a program based on C. Thank you very much.